Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the FIDA Awards, our seventh awards. Um, we've got the lovely Katerina Gorbenko with us today. Um, and we just had a few technical hitches on Zoom, which has been quite fun. Nice background stuff. So um, I'm just going to start sharing a screen to show. Uh, let's just bring that up a second. Share this. Share. Perfect. Okay. So what I did, uh, Katerina, is I had a little scour around your website. I'd l I've looked at your Instagram anyway, but it was quite interesting to see your website as well and mm -hmm. um, see some of the work. So I'll, I'll dive into it just so we can have a look. And I found these. Um, so one of the interesting things this year is two people that won the awards were monochromatic. So working in this black and white style. Um, and I think you've got a very interesting graphic style. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, of black and white drawing, whether it's woodcuts, illustrations, paintings. I'm a big fan of German expressionists. Um, so there's a sort of that weaves through with the black and white graphic artworks, especially woodcuts as well. And your your approach and your technique really has that feel of a wood, has a woodcut refinement to it. And graphic, you know, you're 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 happy to fill things in, um, and also not over labour drawings that you're feeling that they need to be finished uh, to a point that makes it a little bit what I would call more naive drawing, which is more mm -hmm. youthful. As you've as you've blossomed and got better and better, you started to find your own style and you've refined it. Only only from me, you know, looking at work and artists and and sort of your your practice and you know you've got such a fascinating practice so what I guess would be good because I know you've taught on one of our courses but it'd be good for people just to know a little bit of a background about you um, and a little bit about what you do and how uh, fashion illustration fashion art art really is in part of your your practice as a creative yeah, so I'm Ukrainian fashion illustrator. Um, I uh, for the last five years uh, or even more, I've been living in and working in Amsterdam. Right now, uh, currently, I'm working as a brand designer uh, in um, Booking.com. Um, yeah, I started drawing fashion illustration when I was, I think, around 15, 16 years old. Um, um, back then I graduated art school um, and uh, I've been drawing a lot on paper so everything uh, all of these illustrations they were created in digital but I've been drawing for many years on paper and uh, when I started drawing in digital format um, I wanted to draw exactly in the same way how I was drawing on paper but um, I was curious to try to do the same thing, but in digital formats. So that's why my illustration looks very similar, like on paper. And sometimes you you don't see a big difference between paper and digital. And um, before that, yeah, uh, before I started um, doing experiments with colors and chaotic lines. I've been doing a lot of black and white illustration. Uh, yeah, you noticed a lot of examples on my website. Um, and um, I was, during that period, I was just trying to find myself. And uh, that period also helps me to, um, to technically grow because uh, I wanted to to create sometimes realistic illustration of products, of models, of um, different clothes, um, uh, everything what what was related uh, to fashion. Uh, so yeah, and uh, yeah, these illustrations basically it's all they all focused on products, uh, but I just wanted to to create them very minimalistic, but at the same time to add some little details like all of these you know lines around them um just to yeah 
to make it look more interesting because if I will draw only the product product, I thought that it might be very, very simple, very yeah, might be very boring, mm -hmm. basically. So yeah. And it's it's the they're, they're really nice still life. So I love the Jill Sander one. It's a great yeah. uh execution and and a piece of work and and uh, you know, this approach to still life and how you could push still life further where you're sort of building compositions is is an area I'd love to see how you could take it further and mix other objects in there that are not maybe so much um well known products and then build from that, you know, and, and I think there could be some interesting interplays here but these are great you know because i i know you have a very good commercial touch as well so you have that sort of commercial head always on of what people would like and what would generate work and what would sell so i i can always see that in your work which is really nice um and then i picked up these because these have been works that have kind of jumped out to us and we featured one of them in a, in a book and um and i i like your sort of combination of uh, it looks like drawing, madness, and mark making, and a child's play. Uh, you you can correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all of these examples, I would say, it's something that I created plus minus re recently. Um, I'm trying to avoid right now using a lot of gray background. Uh, just, I don't know, I want to add more colors, more, I want to... I want my illustration looks more vibrant and catchy uh, and a little bit chaotic. So that's why I'm just, um, I, I'm trying just to, to not use a lot of gray right now. Uh, so that's why the illustration in the middle, you can see it's more warmer, I would say. But I started to experiment, ex experimenting more with all of these chaotic lines, uh, I would say recently. And I don't know, I added them in the beginning just a little bit, but but I think that um, every year I was express I was trying to express myself more and more and try to experiment more with my style, and this is where I am right now. And uh, I think even looking, if you will look at my portfolio or website, you can see how I was growing uh, through the years because. Uh, a lot of my illustration, they were really super minimalistic. Uh, I was focusing more on technique rather than on style. And now I'm focused more on style because I'm thinking that it's it should be part of me. It should be part of my illustration. And this is, yeah, this is how I see my illustration ba basically right now. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, as I said, yeah, I also um experimenting a lot of with the col colors and textures so i would divide my process into three blocks i'm doing a lot of, of research i'm thinking what i want to draw um i don't know from the beginning how it might look in the end but i'm just thinking okay what ex specifically i want to draw so i'm spending a lot of time on research then execution or sketching and the third part i would say it's uh, working with colors and color combinations a lot of sketches which i'm posting on social media i'm always adding some a few different options so people might actually see that um, my illustration might look different differently or in a uh, like we using different colors I can show that they're not only black and white but they I can bring more colors and my and they may look completely different so uh, this is what I'm uh, I'm doing right now yeah and and have you tried have you done much animation with your work or yes uh yeah actually a year ago maybe um i've been using um after effects all of these programs for animations uh for quite a long time but last year i decided to dive more even even more deeply into animation and i um, finished an online course for uh, animation and uh, i also try to animate my illustrations and lines more to see how it might look because you know i'm i'm very curious person i'm always asking myself okay what I can do can I try something like this or like that so uh, that's why I always uh, curious to, to try new formats and animation was uh, also uh, one of that uh, I would say option which I also tried um, but I would say that at this like I'm, I'm uh, when I'm adding animation it's I would also would say it's very uh, minimalistic way of adding uh, animation because I don't want to 
um, ruin uh, the final look of illustration. So that's why if I'm adding something on top or if I'm animating some details, it should be just very, I would say, the very tiny or a little touch uh, in the end of yeah, of, yeah. of this. So yeah, I, well, um, for me, um, what would be really nice, like because I, I did a lot of animation in virtual reality through drawing mm. and you can go into different areas. And, I, and the way I see some of these drawings is if uh, you're seeing parts of the lines being made and you're following just a very, because you've got abstract paintings on your, that mark making. And I feel that that could be part of the video animation as well. And I feel that, um, rather than it being like a little GIF stop frame animation, more of it's like going through a journey and, and these, these faces are worlds that I'm going to go fly through and I'm going to go past the big eye and, and past the nose. So the it's let, I, I don't know, that's how I kind of imagine the animation of it is that really I look at big, big marks and big lines and then I go, oh, there's an eye there because uh, you've got all the details there and I just feel that, that would be a really nice, you know, like like that circle of motion. And in After Effects, you can do all of that. You can create depth field. And yeah. I, I feel that that's, that's where I would love to see the work going, is that the scale feels huge. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then kind of work your way from there. But, I, you know, it, it depends on the different images, because some of it could be parts of it animating, and some of it could be you're going around. And, and and adding the drawings to it. So uh, it's definitely got lots of legs and I know animation is going to become really a big, it's becoming bigger and bigger, but I think it's going to become more relevant now that Instagram reels have become so prominent um, that they want video content. So we're going to, the demand's going to be there to generate interesting animations and film work and stuff like that. So yes, great. Even though I'd love to see these characters talk and move, that might be through um we could use other tools like uh filters and you know mm. it can animate somehow so that that potentially it has it there's lots of legs there anyway which is which is good news um, yeah i also tried to want to quickly add i also tried uh 3d um and i i was trying to create all of these lines in 3d and add them as a separate element on top of illustrations but sometimes just it's not working well. It also depends on illustration. It depends what you're trying to achieve. And sometimes it could be too much because yeah. what I'm sometimes I'm a little bit afraid when I'm adding a lot of uh, elements around the model or products. I'm thinking that it sometimes it might be too much. So uh, that's why I'm trying to find a balance between the background and the and the for example uh, the model which you can see. Uh, yeah. Go yeah. go 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 back to early animators like Tomato, mm -hmm. uh, Studio AKA, uh, people like that, Passion Pictures, who made really nice animations when I was a student for like Orange Mobile, and they would feel very flat. So rather than 3D, they had 3D feel like rotoscoping and stuff like that, but that sort of feeling of you could go through the image, but they're still flat planes. It's yeah. still always working rather than it becoming the other way, which is we're seeing the other 3D illustrator image makers who make the objects 3D. I, I don't necessarily think you need that. It could become part of it, but I don't think you actually need it because it becomes gimmicky. Yeah. I, I yeah. Think just, just keep the textures, keep their line marks um, and keep that sort of very flat digital graphic mark making. I, mm -hmm. I think there's, there's so much potential there and, um, What's also I was I was recently also thinking to experiment with uh, AI, uh, because yeah. it also can generate some some details for me, which I also can try to put them on top or combine with illustration. Yeah. But with the AI, you need to be also very specific. You need to know what specifically you want machine to create for you. So yeah. it might be also interesting because it also can create you know. Um, you also can create an like illustration or even a, i don't know if it's possible to create animation with ai uh, i think yeah you can yeah. uh it's it will be interesting to see how this line uh, will be blurred between the uh like real 
illustration and I don't know something something which was generated by machine. So, yeah, I think in time it will it will kick in. But if you want that ultimate control of mark making, um, there was a, an interesting thing we did at the Royal College where you would draw directly onto the film and then mm -hmm. put it for a 16 mil camera. And that's the same process. So, you know, your marks are on there. There could be bits of dust or scra scrapings, and then you just feed it through the films. And then, you know, lots of people did that. John Cage was doing it with Merce Cunningham. So there's lots of this sort of old school filmmaking, uh, Jean Cocteau, people like that who played with films. And I, mm -hmm. and, and I feel that keeping that very experimental process um within your work and and also what what i did is uh, i played a lot with your drawings and then doing projections mm. and project, projecting flat images onto objects onto buildings and then do many different projections with different cameras so you could have one drawing the yellow line on a building one on a it could be on a van on a truck i, I don't know it's it's projections is a really interesting area and then filming that yeah uh, so you, it's like a multi-layered thing using the real world using real time uh to then document and create your own animation it just depends on how experimental you want to go but i i know i, I was playing with that sort of journey of projecting my drawings onto objects and buildings and polystyrene and stuff like that so it's, it's mm -hmm. nice to see so anyway I, this was more about you rather than a big crit, but it's uh, it's it's always nice to see your work anyway. So because mm. I know it has lots of potential, and then I guess going into the the fi the final image that you know, the culture vulture, mm -hmm. um, like what made you interested in selecting that one because it is an interest. It is it really interests me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, ev this is not the first time when I'm joining. Uh... Uh, FIDA award and all the time topics completely different so and I'm always curious to read them because uh, and I'm thinking how I can connect my illustration to this topic because sometimes it might be so far away from what I'm drawing and what's the the main topic uh, like I can see like what's the the topics in the list so um I, to be honest, it was my intuition which told me to try this illustration because, to be honest, it was very difficult to connect something with culture vulture because for me, like, culture m might be everything. You can select, like, whatever you want and it might be a, I don't know, a culture because even, like, we all part of the, I don't know, of modern culture um, and illustration also might be a part of the culture but uh yeah i just i just decided to try with this illustration um yeah it was i would say it was my intuition which told me to try it oh good good because uh i guess the we had done in the very first year was the documentary mm -hmm. and um i did lots of research into the ideas of people going around uh, and, you know, we had all these issues with people with um, grabbing different cultures and appropriating in the wrong way. And I just thought about it's so unfair that you could, you know, I might go to a, a different country and then mm -hmm. be inspired or influenced and bring it back into my my workflow. And then people said, oh, well, you're appropriating their their culture. You're not mm -hmm. being discrediting it. And it's very difficult for a designer. Uh, and especially fashion designers who are using African or different, you know, different design that they've gone and been influenced by. Uh, and, you know, John Galliano was always doing that. He was looking at so many realms of different influences. And that's part of being a human. And I, and, yeah. and I, and I, I thought about this vulture flying around, looking at the world and grabbing different parts of culture, which could be pop culture. Um, it could be underground. It could be beatniks, the outsiders, you know, all these different collectives, especially when you're trend forecasting as well. So it made me think of all of these elements. And I think maybe it felt sometimes a bit too cryptic. But the idea was this, like, but you're the bird and you're flying and looking at the world. And, and what do you look at that you pick up? And then when we saw this, we thought it was like, you know, the, I, the idea of like the face, 
tattoos have become quite trendy, mark making, scribbling, making notes, uh, all of these sorts of variables that you had in your artwork, it kind of really rung true. Um, and then it had a very, you know, with them with them shades, it you know, it felt East Celeron. I could see these sorts of brands jumping in my face. And it felt very now, very current, uh, well executed, always playful, um, a little bit avant-garde. Um, and it would I would like to have seen it with colour or with I, I love it without colour. And I think mm -hmm. that's a statement. And I think, did you think about colour? uh when like first of all when i saw this portrait it's a portrait of polish uh model her name is anya rubik when i saw the the photo shoot for v magazine and when i saw these big sunglasses of boucheron i'm like wow i was really impressed by by her look and i'm like i i was challenged myself and asked myself can i draw uh like like these sunglasses and look realistic and so they should pop up and uh, can I add like can I create illustration using my style and make it more look even more better even more cooler than photography uh, so it was like a challenge which I or a question which I ask myself can I do something better than than the photo because I want her like to look even like like more like pop um, so uh, and that's why I decided just to to try it, and uh, with with actually with all of these lines, I I didn't think how specifically I'm gonna draw or I how I'm gonna add them. It was so spontaneously, it was so quick. I I didn't spend a lot of time drawing this. To be honest, it's very simple illustration. There's only three layers. It's her portrait, a texture like a background, and only like and, and lines on top, and that's it. Only three layers. So I would say this work was created very fast. And I don't know, there were a lot of my intuition or uh, uh, inside of me, which tell, told me that I need to try to do this. And I'm pretty happy with the result with sunglasses. I actually also tried to create the, exactly the same illustration, but on the paper, but I was not very happy with the final result. So that's why I also decided to draw it in digital format. So this one, uh, this particular illustration was created on the, uh, uh, in digital format in uh, Adobe Photoshop. So, um, and I didn't want to add any colors from the beginning because I, when I saw her, I'm like, oh no, this should be definitely in black and white. So, yeah. Yeah, good. And, and I think um, most of the people that I've spoken to who've won the awards this year have either done it through intuition, done it mm -hmm. through rebellion, Mm -hmm. uh, against their jobs and want to do something a little bit against what they do as a job. You know, they some were doing designs for uh, Tory Burch and they're very graphic, mm -hmm. you know, and then they go, right, I, I want to do something that's about me, something where it's more fun. And I think that all, all the people that I've spoken to so far that have won, I've all spoken about the same thing as you, rather than... Uh, oh well this is the drawing that I think should represent it's more about my gut said this and this is what I did and mm -hmm. I think that's quite a nice uh, uh, you know you're almost singing from the same hymn sheet as the others mm -hmm. and it kind of came to that sort of perfect moment where it's like okay right um, and almost finding it quite difficult which which one sort of to select from the categories because you know this could have kind of gone into fame and fortune it could have probably got into the selfie it, it, it taps into many of the different ones but i think the culture vulture one was was spot on and i think it you know id magazine about culture about people um and about being cool all them elements i think it really it connects with which was great so this this was a fantastic piece and and as i said to you earlier katarina you know, the goal is to keep these little these talks quite short, so we keep them snappy, yeah. um, so people can watch them and quickly breeze past them and enjoy them. So, you know, and and you've created some great work, and 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 I'd be really interested to see how you could take your work for. You know, I'd love to see your work. Uh, I don't know if you know Shepard Fairey, who's a graffiti artist, but he mm -hmm. uses lots of layering, 
And, you know, I could imagine this as a screen print. It could be on a T-shirt, but I could also imagine it having lots of layers and then printing it on top and all of collecting old posters, putting them read back together and then printing this almost like Warhol, like going up oh, yeah. this black and white print mm -hmm. over a collage, um, you know, and, and then you have the minimalist version where you just print it direct, but it would be nice to see how you could extend what you do. And I think that's what we need to do, you know, rather than it being left in this digital space. Yeah. I think as, as creatives is, how do you get your voice out there even further um, or it being laser cut or, you know, that's how we use technology in new ways is how could this be done using new technology uh, could, there was an interesting company I met called Giotto and you could send it to the machine and it uses the old, uh, I can't remember if dot matrix machine, but it picks up the pen and then draws it and it can mm. draw huge murals. We've seen one of the fighter members, um, Stephanie Rip. She actually had her image painted directly on the wall by a robot. Mm. So it was quite nice. It, it almost was a large format printer, but I've seen robots drawing stuff. It would be because wow. you've got these sort of sporadic marks. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be nice to see how you could disrupt yourself. You know, you're talking about AI, machine learning. Our last talk was about AI as well how could artists incorporate that into their practice? I feel like some of these more disruptive marks on top of a very tight drawing could be done using machines, using other processes and, and putting in code and thinking in that way. Um, and it could be something that could be generated as a performance piece. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it could be performative based. Like so, there's a band playing, I always imagine music, and then this like massive piece of art, you know, I always think of Julian Schnabel, someone mm -hmm. like that, where he's making these massive works and there's music blasting, classical music. And I'd love to, it's something that's more contemporary rather yeah. than it always being a, a piece of abstract painting. It, it's something like this. So I feel mm -hmm. that, you know, putting them things, you know, it's kind of inquisitive how to put some of these, because it's love to see, it's, I love to see the journey of how art and a creative takes one thing to the next and you know you're talking about these other things how do you take it out of the digital space as well yeah. is where I'd, I'd love to see your work and there's the outernet have you heard of the outernet by uh, Tottenham Court Road it's it's the digital building you know it mm -hmm. has digital screens I think they allow people to every so often to put their work in and see if they'll they'll project it onto the, it's, it's 360, it's all over the walls, it's very immersive, um, and your work could work well there, so, and in virtual reality, so I think there's, there's lots of potential to see augmented reality, uh, all of these things, I'm sure, and you could bring them into your own professional career, but anyway, Katerina, yep. Thank, Agree. Thank yeah. So, yeah. I just want to add so that much. only one detail that, yeah, we're yes, living in such an interesting time and with all of these new technologies, it's such a great time to experiment with all of them. So this is also one of the questions which I ask myself, like how I can mm -hmm. expand my techniques or expand my uh, illustration, like how I, how they, how I'm, can make them like bigger or massive or interesting or i don't know uh, can i can i try some other different formats or fo forms because if you can see like what i was doing five years ago or 10 years ago it's it's completely different like level i would say so i'm really curious i'm even curious to to see where i'm going to be in the next five years maybe in the next five years i'm going to do all of these crazy things which you just explained so yeah it's interesting yeah. time and uh, i think we we should try uh to experiment with our art definitely yeah I, I also like you talking like that um just came to mind because london is very about being um rebellious um, and I don't know if Amsterdam's the same, but in London, we're, we're very anti everything. And, you know, I, it reprints me of college uh, when we use newsprint. Newsprint's mm -hmm. like cheap uh, newspaper, paper. You usually use it to clean the screens when you're screen printing. And I can imagine if you bought, uh, like you're talking about doing it big, if there's, you, you have to become a bit more rebel, but you could mm -hmm. screen, you can buy big screen prints, and you could print on newsprint and almost poster onto 
buildings, you know, you buy your um, wallpaper paste, go out there at night, yep. paste it onto a building big, you know, and you screen print parts of it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and it's newsprint, so it's quite cheap. And you could do it in lots of places. And, and it's, a, it's a different angle to your work. And, it, mm -hmm. you know, you may not see yourself as a graffiti artist, but it's almost uh, an artist who wants to be noticed. You know, Basquiat, he, his approach was very much the same. And, th mm -hmm. and then some of these other marks, you could have, you know, you could bring in the idea of someone like Matisse who had a really long stick. And you're kind of standing there drawing with this long stick, all these abstract marks on top of your newsprint. So going large and being a little bit uh, disruptive uh, within it, you know, it could be buildings that are going to be knocked down or places where you can put stuff up. But it then gives you the space to photograph your work large. And mm -hmm. and that that could, I think that could be a potential op opportunity for you there is to think that way or. And 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 this have this very low-fi, cheap approach, you know, all them objectives stuck to you rather than expensive big gallery. It's use the environment around you. Yeah. And then and and that gives you an opportunity for people to see your work. You know, I, I did it in my degree about night discourse where people walk mm -hmm. and they see stuff. And that's very much in the graffiti world, how graffiti eyes think. Um, so I think that could your work's definitely got the potential for that. So I think um, when I first did Fido it was be more diva. Now I think it's be more rebel. So <laughs> I, I think that that approach is the way forward. But yes, I, I know you've got lots to do, Katerina. So I'm mindful of your world. Um, but thank you for coming today. And uh, after all that technical glitch, we managed to get through this. <laughs> yeah, using yeah, no worries. Technology. But thank well you for done. your patience. Yeah, no worries. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank Have you so day. much. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Yeah, bye-bye.